Hi everyone, I'm going to be doing a hair study for this demo, and you can see I, I started with this sphere, and I'm going to sort of be imagining this mop of hair over top of this sphere, apart from, you know, a head or a face, and, and that way we can focus on, on, on just solving the problems here with, with hair and, and not think about anything else. Now, what I want you to see right off the bat when you're painting hair is, is you don't want to start with individual strands. You want to start with the masses, the big masses. You can see... I'm keeping it very loose. I've indicated where that highlight is. I'm indicating different colors. See, there's different colors all around this hair. It doesn't matter, you know, even if you have dyed hair like this, where it's all dyed one color, it still will look different in different areas. In the shadows, it might look different. You know, in the lights, it might look different. You know, in a thinner area of the hair, it might look different. You know, hair is never just one color. Um, and it's never just one value, of course, too. So you need to keep all those things in mind. Um, so I'm dealing with this in terms of the big masses of light and dark and the big colors. That's what I'm looking for here. I'm looking for all of those things and trying to establish those right off the bat. Now you can see I've put that highlight in. And that highlight, there's a very uh, important uh, concept and, and an aspect uh, to uh, the value side of things that I want you to consider. And, and um, you know, a lot of times when you're, when you're, when I see people painting hair, they make the highlights in the hair, very, very crisp, very solid, very opaque. Uh, they almost approach it like you would if you were painting a vase. If you imagine painting a, a, a glass, uh, you know, pitcher or a vase or something like that, the highlight on it is going to be very, very crisp. You know, it's, a, it's very reflective, so it'll be a very crisp edge, a very solid white, you know, hi highlight there. And a lot of times people paint uh, the highlights on hair that way. And because hair has those individual strands that overlap and flow over top of one another, you're going to get a breakup in that highlight a little bit. You're going to, it's not going to be this pristine, super, super crisp highlight. You know, it's, it's going to have some textural elements to it. It's going to be broken up a little bit. And that's why you can see me putting some lines through it there and, uh, and, and things like that. So, so keep that in mind. The highlight's never going to be just this bold, solid, opaque highlight. You know, because you have individual strands of hair and you're, you're not drawing those individual strands, but you want to capture that textural effect, you know, that breakup pattern of that, of that area, you know, a value, you know, you want to, you want to get that edge to look right. So, um, so keep that in mind. Now, uh, you can see I started with the big masses first. Now I'm breaking it down to the smaller chunks. I really suggest that you do it this way. You start very big, very general, then narrow it down a little bit more, right? Narrow it down a little bit more, you know, because hair is going to sort of flow over a surface like water you know it's it's there's going to be certain areas where you know it 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 you know it it tumbles over top of what's around it you know it's kind of like a stream you know water will do that it's like you see it kind of flowing over top of itself and that's what hair is doing here and you have to imagine that 3d shape underneath to be able to do that but but break it down first into something very very general then start breaking it down to those chunks of hair those 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 masses of hair that are just a little bit smaller and, and that will help you then, you know, give it even more of a realistic look when you have those groupings of hair. Um, now, one thing you see me doing, too, is going to the edge around the contour of the hair and adjusting a lot of the, you can see that there when I zoomed in, adjusting a lot of the textural breakup there. You know, that's kind of the best way I can describe it, the breakup pattern, like it's, you know, that, like a, a stringy breakup pattern to the edge. That plays a huge role. Even if you had a solid mass of value, and you had those textural elements around the contour, that would, that would make a huge difference. It would look so much more realistic. So don't, don't diminish that idea in your mind. You know, uh, the, the contour plays a huge role in how hair is perceived. Um, now you can see I'm, I'm adjusting the edges. I'm going back in, I'm, I'm blending some things, I'm making some things a little bit softer, making some things a little bit more crisp, depending on the area, and, and thinking about the light source and all of that. But, you know, at this point, I've done the groundwork. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't need to, now, now it's just fine-tuning things. You know, now it's just getting the textural effects right, getting things to read properly. You know, I've, I've, I've worked out all, where all the big masses are. I've worked out, you know, all, all the big problems. Now I just need to come in and start making slight adjustments. And, and you'll see me do that. I'll, I'll be adjusting that, that contour edge like I was talking about. I'll be adding, you know, subdividing these chunks of hair a little bit more adding a few more details and things like that. But really, this is all rooted in the work that I did before in establishing those big values, the big masses, and, and, uh, and getting all of that working. Um, I would definitely recommend this exercise to you if, uh, if you're 
trying to get a handle on it because you doing this will give you the tools you need to do any type of hair. You know, once you once you can understand these principles, the simple principles and, and make some of these observations about, you know, the texture, the color, the values on hair and, and, and the way that hair appears, you know, when, when, when you can get a handle on all that, it's very easy then to paint curly hair, to paint straight hair, to paint frizzy hair, you know, it's just, all you have to do is really vary uh, s some of the textural elements, vary the way that you uh, address the values and, and adjust the way you do edges a little bit, but it's all very, very similar. So I would definitely recommend this exercise, um, you know, separating it and, and keeping it on its own uh, really helps. You know, when you're doing it apart from a portrait or something like that, you, you can spend a lot of time just working out the, the issues and the problems you may have in, in rendering hair. So um, give it a shot and, uh, and keep these tips in mind. And before you know it, hair will not be as daunting as it seemed before. Hi, my name is Jonathan Hardesty and I've been a fine artist for 13 years. In my class, Essentials of Realism, we're going to explore what makes a work of art look realistic. As a representational painter, I've had to think about realism a lot over the years. And realism breaks down to four key concepts, proportion, value, edge, and color. In my class, we're going to learn how to understand those concepts, observe them properly from reality, and also be able to manipulate them while maintaining realism. All lectures are pre-recorded, so it doesn't matter what time zone you're in or what your sleeping habits are. You can access all the content when it's convenient for you. There's also no specific medium requirement for this class. Students can learn just as effectively painting and drawing digitally. Throughout the length of this class, I'll be available to answer your questions, help you with any problems, and give you one-on-one -on -one personalized instruction. In each stage, I'll be painting directly over top of your work and helping you grasp these concepts and make them your own. I have a real passion for teaching, so I'm looking forward to seeing you in my class. Sign up right away because there's only a limited amount of spaces. I'll see you there.